Therefore, you only have to make the light circulate. That is the deepest and most wonderful secret. The light is easy to move, but difficult to fix. If it is made to circulate long enough, then it crystallizes itself. It is the condition of which it is said, Silently thou fliest upward in the morning. <laughs> so here we come to the deepest secret, huh? the most wonderful secret. Just circulate the light. Now, before you can circulate the light, you have to see the light, or at least feel it, sense it, somehow or other. Now, why do all Chinese methods recommend practicing Qigong? Because Qigong is exactly the circulation of the light. I keep telling this to my Indian friends and they don't get it. Qi or Pran is of course well known in yoga, both Indian and Chinese versions. But in the Indian variety, it's gotten all mixed up with attainment of cities, mystic powers, of all kinds of nonsense, and very much mixed up with a kind of breath control. Now, yes, the breath is one kind of prana, but that's not the only kind. There are many kinds. In fact, they're listed. Prana, apana, udana, and so on. There's at least seven or eight kinds in the Vedas. Not all have to do with breath. Many of the types of prana have to do only with the will. For example, I want to raise my hand. How do I do it? Huh? Every time I give a spiritual method here, people ask me, how? How do I do that? How do I do this? Well, how do you raise your hand? Or how do you swallow? That's a good one. How do you swallow? How, come, how can you swallow without choking yourself or swallowing your tongue? Huh? Well, you know it's a part of your body. You learned it when you were a tiny infant, along with many other things. Now, unfortunately, in our culture, being so impacted by false religions, sex repressive religions, we learn very early in childhood, maybe even in the womb, how to suppress the energy. Instead of letting it circulate, we try to make it dead. And the main symptom of that is that we conceive of our bodies as a solid physical lump of stuff, huh? a piece of meat. But the body is not a piece of meat. The body is a very complex process that has all kinds of dimensions. And one of those dimensions is chi, or prana, or energy. Now the thing about energy is it always wants to move. Energy doesn't want to remain still. Huh? So how to crystallize the energy? Secret of the Golden Flower says, you circulate it. And when you circulate it for a long time, it crystallizes by itself. See, this is the thing. Everyone wants some instant result. But in these matters, you cannot get instant. Still, if you practice the circulation of the chi for some time, and then you begin meditation, it'll be so much easier, so much more effective. So, of course, they're going to say, how do you circulate the qi? Well, my qigong teacher, Mrs. Yu, who I mentioned earlier in this series, 
always used to say, the chi follows the yi. We used to ask her the same stupid question. <laughs> How do we make it circular? The chi follows the yi. And what is yi? Directed intention. So if you concentrate your mind on a certain part of the body and then move it, the chi will follow the yi. The chi will follow your concentrated mind. You don't have to push it. In fact, you can't. Pushing the chi is like herding cats. They just scatter. Here is my great grandfather. He's the first cat herder in our family. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Anybody can herd cattle. Holding together 10,000 half wild short hairs. Well, that's another thing altogether. <laughs> they all go their own way. So instead of pushing the chi, you have to pull it. How do you pull it? With attention, directed intention. So let's say you want to do what in Qigong is called the small circulation. The small circulation is simply from the pit of the stomach up to the head and back down again. And you can go up in the back and down in the front, or you can go up in the front and down in the back, either way. How do you do it? You simply concentrate your mind on that part of the body and then move the concentration in the way that you want the chi to move. Look, there are so many tutorials on qigong on the internet. Don't be lazy and don't make me do all the work. Go out and find out this stuff. Don't ask me stupid questions. Don't waste my time. I won't put up with it. So go out and research this qigong. It's very easy, very simple, very common knowledge in China. Uh, you see in the morning in any park in China, people are going out and doing Tai Chi and Qigong. Why? To keep the energy moving, to keep it circulating. And you find these people, even in old age, to be very youthful, flexible, strong, and happy. That's natural. Why? Because... After moving the energy for so long, it will crystallize all by itself. And then you have the real thing. So, what I'm telling you, in other words, is actually given by the Buddha in some of his sutras. There are some sutras that have a complete catalog of, of all the different parts of the body. All the different koshas or shells. All the different layers and levels all the different organs and parts of the body. And one is to put awareness into those in a certain order. Now, what is that going to do? Circulate the chi. Buddha doesn't have to say it. He just has to say, put your attention here, then put your attention there, then move your attention here. And what's going to happen? The chi is going to follow. You know, do we always have to say everything literally to, for you to follow a teaching? Do we always have to tell you every little step of why and how for you to try something and see what it does? See, you have been spoiled by Western education. Western education says you give a procedure step by step and you give all the reasons why, why, why. Why? <laughs> Because people will always ask why. So you anticipate. But actually the question why is a very stupid question. First you need to know what. What and how. Then why will pop up all by itself. Huh? Like, why do I drink tea? <laughs> Well, you have no idea what's in this tea, do you? <laughs> Neem leaves and Tulsi extract. Oh, and there's a little bit of green tea in there, too. Why? Well, make some for yourself and taste it and find out why. See, it completely normalizes your digestion. Gets rid of, of intestinal parasites 
and their eggs and lard it. And so on and so on and so on. So many effects. It's the same with chi circulation. If you do it every day, there are so many beneficial effects. I couldn't even begin to list them. But the main one is, after circulating the chi for a long time, it will crystallize all by itself. And that is the deepest and most wonderful secret. So don't just ask why or even how. Just do it. If you need supplementary instruction, go look it up on Google. Don't be lazy. People ask me the darndest questions, you know. They'll look me up on Facebook and, and hit me up with a chat. And then they'll ask me some really stupid question. I'll reply in three words and they won't be able to understand anything because they don't have the background. They haven't educated themselves. One guy, oh, well, last night, one guy asked me, I have this lump in my throat. <laughs> Is that some energy phenomenon? Is it because of my meditation? <laughs> no, it's because you're in anxiety and you're simply getting a lump in your throat because you're tense. Duh. People are so stupid. They're all up in their heads. And it begins in the womb. Begins in the womb. The child is sitting in the womb. Huh? And the mother is repressing her sex energy. Why? Because in relationships, if you make sex more scarce and more valuable, then you can use it to control your partner. Nasty, isn't it? Ooh. What kind of love is that? It's not love. It's manipulation. It's politics. Huh? You know, this is an old joke. <laughs> a woman should be a lady in the parlor, an economist in the kitchen, and a whore in bed. <laughs> That's not the punchline. That's just the setup. <laughs> but what are women like, really? A whore in the parlor. <laughs> uh, a lady in the kitchen, in other words, she doesn't want to do any work. And a whore in the parlor means that, that she'll break your confidences and, and ruin your pride in front of your neighbors and friends in the parlor. And an economist in bed. <laughs> in other words, she's rationing sex so that it becomes scarce and therefore valuable and can be used to manipulate the partner. So this is going on. This is called sexual neurosis. And guess what? It's a communicable disease because the child is in the womb, the mother is repressing the sex energy. You know? And because of that, the child learns the same habit. The baby, even in the womb. And then, of course, as soon as the child comes out of the womb and they're exploring their body and touching themselves and putting stuff in their mouth and whatever, huh? and if the child touches the genitals, oh, the mother then freaks out and uses various te intimidation techniques to stop it. Can't have this child touching itself. Well, why not? Huh? Why not? Is the child your property? Is the child your slave to do with what you wish? No. The child is its own living entity and has freedom and autonomy naturally built in. Who are you to interfere with it? This is how sexual neurosis is communicated from the parents to the children. My mother was practicing Tantra while I was in the womb. <laughs> so I got a different set of habits. And they made it much easier for me to attain self-realization. Because my energy wasn't blocked. Isn't blocked. Will not be blocked. Therefore, all of you unless your parents were also tantricas, are sexually neurotic to some degree. 
Ask any psychologist, they'll tell you everybody is crazy. It's only a matter of kind and degree. So you have to overcome this. How can you overcome it? By melting the blocks. How do you melt the blocks? By circulating the energy. How do you circulate the energy? <laughs> By moving your attention through the body in a certain pattern. And read any book by Mantak Chia or Dr. Jwing Ming Yang. Uh, they're the two greatest authorities I know of on this subject. And learn it. Do it. Huh? Watch some videos on YouTube of the great circulation. Right? You start out circulating the chi in a big circle. Big, big circle. Up the back, down the front. And then you reverse the energy up the front, down the back, along with the breath and maybe some standing postures, maybe some qigong movements or tai chi movements, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes to put your attention into the channels where the qi can flow and move the qi. Look, the qi is going to move anyway. That's the nature of energy. It loves to move. How do you get the energy to crystallize? is by getting it to move in a certain channel, in a certain pattern. So you start with the big circulation, and then gradually the small circulation, and then smaller and smaller and smaller, until the energy is circulating right here, in the square inch. The square inch is also known as the heavenly heart. It's the throne of the king of heaven. Try to understand. If you can make the energy circulate here, huh? either way, inwards, outwards, forwards, backwards, huh? the backward flowing method is the essence of all meditation. If you can make the energy circulate backwards, if you can turn within and become aware of awareness, enlightenment is easy. Enlightenment is simple. Enlightenment is fast. It doesn't have to take years and years and years. The only reason it does is because you have so many blocks. You cannot reverse the flow. It's become a habit. Compulsive extroversion. It's taught to us in school. It's taught to us at home. It's taught to us at work. Everywhere in society. Who are the big stars? Huh? They're all compulsive extroverts. You don't ever see a movie of a big star just sitting and contemplating awareness, do you? No, because that wouldn't make a very interesting drama. But we're to cut the drama, just lose the drama. We don't need drama, you know? It's not like you're gonna die if you don't get drama. <clears throat> but because people like excitement, their condition to seek out excitement. They can't meditate. They can't sit even for a minute. They have to move. They have to do something. If you sit down, people will say, but don't just sit there. Do something. Huh? But what I say is, don't just do something. Sit there. Watch the energy. Move the energy. Circulate the flow and then reverse it. And that is the deepest and most wonderful secret.